Hey everyone, this is Angel from Apex Gaming with a brand new video for God of War. In this video, I'm going to give you a complete guide to the worst spot in all the Nine Realms, Niflheim. This desolate place is home to some of the endgame content of God of War, but as soon as you enter here for the first time, you may ask yourself, do I really need to waste my time on this place? Well, let's try to motivate you with some juicy rewards that you can obtain here if you grind for hours. There are free epic armor sets that can be bought from Sindri at the entrance of the realm by using Ivaldi's rusted armor materials that can be found once you unlock Ivaldi's workshop and others inside the various chests of the maze. No. Any of these sets share a common bonus perk on each of their individual armor pieces that grants a very small amount of constant health regeneration. Ivaldi's Endless Mist favors strength and defense, Ivaldi's Curse Mist favors runic, and Ivaldi's Deadly Mist balances strength, runic, and defense. There are also five epic chests that can be unlocked by using Mist Echoes, the most common material in the realm, and contain the following rewards. A perfect artifact of the Blight and five Niflheim Aloys, the Eye of Niflheim epic enchantment that greatly increases resistance to the Curse Mist of Niflheim, a chilling mist of Niflheim used to buy a frozen flame with Sindri, and fully upgrade your Leviathan X. The Blightguard Epic Blades Pummel with low perk activation to strike with an explosive curse that inflicts weakness to enemies on any successful hit, and the Blightbringer Epic Axe Pummel with the same effect as the Blightguard Epic Blades Pummel. Finally, there are three realm turns with the following rewards the Gift of Apollo Heavy Runic Attack. The Mistburn Epic Axe Pummel with low perk activation chance to grant healing miss on any successful hit that regenerates health and increases runic, and the Talisman of Curse Power that unleashes a wave of Curse Mist that instantly weakens all surrounding enemies by lowering their stats. Are all of these rewards worth wasting your time in this realm? Mm, mostly not. After completing all Muspelheim trials, defeating all Valkyries and kicking Secrets, but with all the top tier armor sets and many enchantment combinations in Give Me a Card of War difficulty, I've got to say that the only ones that I think are worth going after are the Blades and Axe Pummels and the Gift of Apollo Runic Attack. Anything else that I didn't mention, I sincerely believe that has a better substitute out there. The health regeneration effect of these armor sets is not even that great. You'll barely even notice it and can be replaced by the Gift of Apollo or the Mistborn Epic Axe Pummel. And while all these pummels have a low chance of triggering, I didn't notice a big difference with or without using high or low lock armor wheels. But when they do trigger, they make for a nice bonus effect. The Talisman of Curse Power is okay, but it's not S tier, and obviously this is all my opinion, but I've shown you all the rewards, and everyone plays differently, so make the best decision for you based on your playstyle. If nice. you really want some of these rewards inside the chests or realm terrors, you'll need to farm Miss Echoes, which is a very common resource that can be found inside any chest in Niflheim, no matter its size. The wooden ones, the stone ones, the shiny ones, or the Norner chest. All of them will give you Mist Echoes. There are other resources available in the realm that won't be useful to open those chests or realm tours in Ivaldi's workshop, but can help you craft or upgrade armor sets. These are the Niflheim Aloy, the Haze Wave, and the Aesir Vein that can only be obtained inside the gold metal chests. Finally, there is another very rare item named Anchor of Fog that appears as well on metal chests and is used to open the realm tears, but more of that in a moment because there is a little trick for the Miss Echoes farming situation. Even when the different type of chests have a baseline amount of Miss Echoes that they can give you, the longer you farm on a single round without reaching out for higher ground either by 
visiting Cinder's shop or going inside Ivaldi's workshop, the more resources you'll get with each chest that you open. Weird, right? So, for example, the first gold chest I open in this run gives me 280 free mist echoes. But the last one, which is just on the nearest section from the center of the maze, after going through the whole maze and opening a lot of other chests, grants a whopping 2800 mist echoes. And this weird rule applies to any chest, it doesn't matter which one you open, so try to go for all the chests that you see, and by doing this, after completing a full run in the maze, you can farm from around 800 to up to 20,000 ish mist echoes per run. It's up to you to decide how much you want to risk each time you venture inside, but be sure to buy a resurrection stone from Sindri's shop. What does all of this mean for you? Well, normal? the more you invest the resources you find yeah. inside the maze while going on those first runs into crafting and upgrading a full mist armor set, you'll have more time to explore the maze, do longer runs, and come out with more echoes, aloys, haze waves, and acer baits. If you're only going for one armor set, this won't take too long, as you can just farm the first area, go upstairs, then come back, defeat the enemies, and repeat until you die of boredom. But if you want to fully upgrade all armor sets, you will need at least one fully upgraded gear set to go for a complete loop around the maze, which takes around from 8 to 12 minutes without any mistakes, so be very patient. But wait, because there is another catch for this situation. If you are farming for the rarest resources in the realm, the Aesir Vein or Anchor of Fog, you will need to venture deep into the chambers in the corners of the maze. In one of these you will find the Valkyrie, and in the other, a random minibus. Once you defeat the Valkyrie, a random minibus will appear in its place, so take that into consideration. After defeating any of these minibuses in these chambers, you will open a gold chest and maybe have the chance to get one of these rare materials. But, if you think you can be very smart and be line from the safe zone to the chamber, pop the chest, get your rare resources, and go back to safety, prepare to go berserk because the game doesn't allow you to do that. Why? I am baffled and I really don't know, and I even want to scream at my monitor right now thinking how I lost one hour of my life trying to farm my easier vein this way without a single one dropping, but the point here is, you need to open as many chests as possible before you open the ones in the corner chambers to have a higher chance of getting a vein or an anchor of fog. If not, you will just receive a haze wave in most cases. Please keep that in mind to avoid smashing your controller to death or worse. So that's it, we've covered the rewards, the resources, the maze loop. There's only the big Nornir chest in the first area that is opened by finding the hidden switches around the maze, but trust me, you'll only get a couple of thousand echoes out of it and it's not worth the hassle of remembering the symbols, searching for the switches and coming back to see if you were right. Just try to spend the least amount of time possible in that realm and get out of there as soon as you can. Be sure to check out more God of War videos that I will be uploading to this playlist right here as I progress with the game, but for now, hope this is useful, thank you for watching and keep enjoying the game.